Hey everyone, Mark from MicroQuest. In today's video, we're going to turn this piece of um, rough Cooper Petty opal and hopefully cut it and turn it into a nice little gem. Won't be super huge, but um, it's got a nice, lot of nice colour in it, a lot of um, scale and kind of like sand in one side of it. So we're probably going to get a fairly small stone. I'll try and give you a bit of a look at it. If the camera will zoom in. So it's got a little bit of um, sand in one side but it's got a really nice bright colour bar, so I'll show you a close-up of that. Okay, so here we have a piece of Cooper Pedi Opal out of our mine. Um, basically, it was only a little tiny piece. There's a, there's a bit coming off here, um, which had a bit more seam, and then it turned to sand as well. So it was only a small bit we got out, but it's got a nice little bit of thickness to it. Uh, there's a lot down this end here, which is pretty much going to be rubbish, I reckon. So anyway, we'll give it a quick weigh. Um, right, fire this up. So it's got a nice little colour bar, so hopefully we'll cut a, cut a you know, decent sort of gem anyway. So we're starting out with 15.2 carats. So we we'll probably end up with, um, I reckon we'll be under 10 carats. If I could get 10 carats out of this, it'd be awesome, but I think we've got so much waste. I reckon probably end up with a five carat stone if I'm lucky. So that's the plan. So now I'll show you a little bit more about it. We'll get a torch and we'll shine it through it. And get it to work. It's fairly clean stone. There's a little bit of um, rubbish on the outside, like the scale. It's a bit tricky to see. Dips down a bit here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll quickly get a texter. We'll start marking out the bits we probably think we're going to lose. So in this case, we're probably going to lose that. Just from what I can see at the moment anyway. It's fairly clean this end. I reckon there's a fair bit through here, which is obviously rubbish. That bit. We're going to lose a fair bit there. And I reckon from there across to the point, I'm even just going to chop that off, I think. So we'll get our favourite pinches. I won't go too crazy, but we'll snip a bit off there. Okay, so as you can see, this end is all fizzled out. So the colour bar is just starting to pop through, through there. It's very skinny, so we won't be able to use it. I could probably snip a little bit more off. Got to be a bit careful doing this because you start losing precious opal. Colour bar's peeking out there, so I will back off a little bit. Or just this bit here is definitely going to come off. Still rubbish. This is what we do even in the mine sometimes to just have a look at what we what we have got. We'll clean up a piece of rough with the pinches. So that colour bar is popping through here pretty skinny there color bar and then it fizzles out kind of there and then it gets a lot bigger there so we'll take this cap off this side is definitely going to be the face as in when i say the face it means the side that um, is going to be the top of the opal we could actually cut it down and use this if we wanted to as a face but it definitely doesn't seem to have as much flash um, i'll put a bit of water on it quickly it'll make it pop a bit so you can just see that's got a lot of beautiful color on this side so we'll take this capstone off here and start cutting it and see what we can get out of it. But it's definitely thicker one side, so not expecting a huge amount out of this gem, but it'll be a nice little cutter anyway. So I'll show you some of the process of that. Right, I'll give it a quick measure too. I always forget, and everyone asks me at the end, what'd you start with? So anyway, uh, I'll turn these on. Well, I've got to get some new batteries, don't I? All right, we have got, where's the camera going? So maximum is 19, 0.6 well it's actually well 20.8 if you want to get real fussy but that's going to all disappear and 16.5 and thickness well it varies a lot so, so from 4.6 say there little cap at the top that's the thickest part and that is 8.6 and i definitely got a buy battery Okay, after snipping off a few of those little bits, I thought I'd just give it another quick way. And so already we're down to 12.5 carats. 
So it's disappearing in front of our eyes. But anyway, we will keep going and hopefully we'll get a nice little gym out of this. Okay, here we go, lots of water. So what I'm doing first is I'm just cutting around the edge of the colour bar just so it shows up to see exactly how much colour we have in the stone and at the same time I'm trying to get a very rough shape, uh, like a shape that I can practically set into jewellery. If you're making a specimen piece you could cut it whatever shape you like uh, but I need to set this so I've got a constantly work is work out which way I'm going to set it and what setting I'm going to make. So I think this one's going to be a, um, probably go a bezel setting anyway with this one. But we really, really won't know until we get into it a bit more. So just working away at the colour bar. Still very, very small here. Very skinny I should say. So just slowly working it down. So I'm going to lose a fair bit of this stone, I'm aware of that. So the colour bar's just peeking through there. I'll probably stop there now and start working on the rest of the stone. We know this is going to be the face. So I'll just slowly start taking some of this cap off so we can just see exactly what we're dealing with. So I'm pretty much expecting a stone just about this kind of big. So if you're thinking oh, I'm going crazy cutting off a lot of um, precious opal, it is quite small behind here so it's practically not worth setting. So you kind of got to break a few eggs to make an omelette sometimes. Um, so anyway, we'll just keep cutting this off. We might end up with something tiny yet, but we'll see. So just gently taking down that bit of scale over the top of the face. Lots of water so we don't get dust. Slowly try and take that scale off to have a peek at the colour underneath. I reckon that's quite deep, so I'm going to just start cutting a lot more of this side out because I want to save this side. If I keep cutting that dead straight, I'm losing this precious opal at the same time. So I know this is pretty well skinny and it's not going to do much, so I'll just keep taking that out first. Keep checking it as you go, having a look. Nothing real exciting there at the moment, so I can keep taking that side out. Starting to get a little bit more colour popping up, but now I can actually see how deep that scale is. So as you can see, it's in there a fair way. Just got to keep working at it so we can do. A little chip, chip in there, a little divot. So I'll work that out as well. Try and do this side first to, to level up that little hole. So 
So just rolling out the edge and then taking away a little bit of that face and scale until we come up with some nice colour underneath. off here and then working on this edge here slowly getting there you can see the colour bars popped out there now so there is a little bit of a dish in that can't do anything about it, so we just have to keep working away at that to get that out. We'll hopefully won't lose all our opal, but anyway, joys of working with rough opal. Again, when you find it in the mine, you still don't know what you've got until you cut it. So the majority of the nice colour is still in that section there. Still nice and thick here. Nothing too exciting this end. So I'm going to cut that out a bit more. take away a little piece at a time, have a look at it. Slowly coming out. This is a 600 grit wheel so it doesn't take much off at a time. starting to come out, it's got a bit of like the staining part has got to come out now. Slowly trying to roll this as we go as well. You can make them dead flat, I do like to have a tiny bit of a roll. Not overly stressed whether it's a huge cabochon or not. Because with a stone like this you won't get massively rounded sides anyway. You just need a stone that you can set um, in a nice bezel or a floor setting. But because it's got a lot of scale on the back of this, I'll pretty much make this a bezel so it'll be locked into a nice solid setting and it'll protect the stone as well and that flat section gives it a nice splash as well. When you have a cabochon stone rolled up high in a setting, yes they look good and they'll catch light on the side but they will get knocked around a lot more if you're going to use them every, for everyday use. Um, if you can have a stone set flat into a setting, the sides of the bezel do protect the stone a lot, so most of our customers want that. Um, sometimes we'll make some really big flashy cabby stones for you know going out and things, but practically these are the sort of cuts that you can just wear anywhere you like and pretty much forget about it. I know my wife agrees with this, but she's a firm believer that you should be just wearing opal pretty much everywhere, not just when you're going out for dinner or something like that. You can show it off to your friends going out for a coffee, or whoever you bump into at the supermarket. <laughs> Sounds very classy, I know, but opal's designed to be worn, so you should be able to just wear it and not stress about it. Righto, so there's a bit of a dip in here. 
I'm going to take that out because I'm going to shape it's pretty much going to be. I think we're going to aim for something like that actually. Any product. Slowly coming out. I may cut this piece here off later, but at the moment it's okay. Start working on this thicker side now, as much as I'd love to keep it. I'm going to try and even it up now. A little bit of sand there has got to come out, and that's pretty much it. So that's one side now. And I'll slowly roll out this oxide staining on the top. Putting an edge on it now as well, where the bezel setting for the jewellery will go over. And this will still change, but we still keep shaping them as we go, and then we can always cut that off later. So you just have to cut a stone, or I have to cut a stone, that will be able to be set. There's no point having weird shapes and nice opal sitting up where you can't practically mount it anywhere. So. So we've got a little few little dots in the top. Come out. Oh, so close. little dot in there. I'll almost leave it. That's pretty much out. I think when we go to the next polish stage that'll get rid of that. So now what I'll do is I'll just take a bit of this rubbish off the back. This iron stone box type material. There's an iron stone band in the mine Pretty much where one of the opal levels were. So that's where we found some of this stuff. Oh, dropped it. So we don't need all this stuff on the back, especially in a bezel setting. We can start evening up the stone a bit now. In this case, we won't see the back of the stone. But you still need it so it sits nicely into a setting. Starting to flatten it out now. You don't need a massive chunky stone sitting up like these 
These are designed to sit nice and flat on your finger. Bezel protecting them around the sides, make beautiful ring stones. So now that we've got our, pretty much our shape, I'm debating whether to, I might take that off actually. Nice stone, nice shape that way, but I'm thinking about quite dull at the front there. I might just take that off and turn it into a more natural shape that way. We're doing preformed shapes. This isn't a calibrated cut, this one. When I say calibrated, I mean whether it's, you know, 9 by 5, 9 by 6, 9 by 7 sort of thing. This is just a preformed shape to get the most out of the opal. Because they're all custom made designs we do, we can pretty much make them whatever shape we like, as long as we can set them. So all I'm doing is super gently rolling that around. Getting any low spots out. And then we'll go on a flexi wheel, a Nova wheel, which will help shape it a little bit, but it'll also get out all the little highs and lows bumps in the stone. So I'm fairly happy with that shape. Take a little edge off there. Round that out a little bit. Okay, so that'll make a nice little ring. Okay, on to the next wheel. So now we're on the 600 grit soft wheel, it's basically an over wheel, and this will slowly smooth out the little lumps and bumps in it. Um, we can also still shape it on this wheel, but this is generally for smoothing it out. So just go all over the stone, keep it moving, don't keep it in one spot because that's how you do to get flat spots in the stone. So this is slowly shaping and also smoothing out. Any little imperfections we can still remove with this wheel as well. rolling out the edges. It's like a flat face on this stone where we're just rolling out the edges a little bit so it's got a slight curve on it. We've still got a little lip on the edge of the stone where our bezel setting can lock onto so the stone can't fall out. I don't think I'll worry about dobbing this stone. When I'm doing calibrated stones so I dob them Easily get a lot more accurate, easily, easier, whatever word is. Easier, right? More the Australian language. You'll be right. Got some nice colour in this. Again, the camera doesn't pick it up. I'll give you two photos later. So again, just smoothing out, rounding out the edges. The 
you're starting out cutting, you can put some tape on your fingers. So the diamond wheels don't take your fingernails off. Soon learn what you can and can't cut. So what I normally do is I'll quickly dry these as well. Um, just rub them, pretty much rub them on my arm or somewhere dry, dry skin. You can actually get the light then shining off it to know whether you've got any little divots or imperfections in there. Just dry that a bit better. So then look at the light and roll it across the stone and I can tell whether there's any divots or low spots or anything that's not supposed to be there. Oops, dropped it. If it's, um, if it's wet you won't see it. So that's pretty much dry. And roll that around and see if there's any little scratches, any imperfections at all. And you need to get them out now because you will not get them out in the final years. Anyway, it's not looking too bad. Put around the back of this stone. Always put a little 45 on the back of the setting the stone as well. And when it sits in the setting, it's not putting pressure on the edge of the back of the stone, which can actually crack a stone if someone's going to town on a setting pressing really hard. So it just makes it sit in the setting nice, nice and neat, nice and gentle makes the stone last pretty much forever. So just flattening that up a little bit. Not too bad. A little bit high on the right hand side there. Just square that down a little bit. A nice even stone thickness wise. So that's looking a lot better all around now. That'll sit nicely in a setting. Give it a little bit more of a run around. Think. Again, camera doesn't pick it up very well. Still a tiny little dot in the middle of that stone. It's a bit of iron staining. staining. No, I'm going to see if I can get that out. Pressing pretty hard on these flexi wheels, they don't take much material off, but it might be enough to get the sort of dot out. Okay, so let's try that again. It's funny, looking at it without through the camera, you can't actually see it, the camera really roll off that little brown dot in the middle. Now, I can't actually tell you, I can just see it. Maybe my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. In fact, I know they're not. Get out. So nobody likes grinding away nice colour, but anyway, no point grinding about it. Makes them nicer stone if you make them all nice and clean. A little bit of impurity here and there is not too bad on some certain designs. But the last thing you want is for your eyes to attract to a little dot or a bit of sand and it takes it away from the rest of the stone. So I'm flattening off the face and sort of rolling the edges as we go a little bit. Like I said, it's pretty much flat face stone, put a slight curve on it. I'm not looking for a huge cabochon on this one, we don't have enough material to do that anyway. I want a practical stone that can still look nice and you can set it. Swap shirt to four, and then you can find a piece of. Um, I'll generally find a bit of dry skin's easy. It sounds really bad, I know. That sort of you can wipe it on the stone, and it'll dry the face. 
and you can get the light shining on it to see whether you've got any scratches. So that's not too bad. In real life, that little brown dot in the center, you can pretty much can't see it. So a bit tricky to capture the picture on camera. If you really want to, you can press the middle of your camera, drop the exposure down, turn the stone into color and make your fingers look like an Oompa Loompa. So I reckon that's a bit dodgy when you're selling stones as well. I think you should have natural light and the stone's always going to look 100% better in real life than it will on a camera. Okay, on to the next wheels and we'll slowly get a bit better polish on that. Lots of water again. Bit of a funny camera angle, I know. I've run out of um, announcing stuff to get it exactly where I want it, but it works. Uh, plenty of water. This is the 1200 grit wheel. Soft lefty wheel. And really, you're taking very little material off. You can press pretty hard on this, and it won't actually take much material off at all. All we're doing now is taking out any little baby scratches that you can hardly see. Very doesn't really shape this wheel. It's pretty much just free polish almost. So you can press pretty hard. You're really not building up removing materials, taking out the fine scratches. And after this, you can see whether there are anything any scratches you do need to address. And if we do, we want to go back to a fourth wheel. So again, not worrying about a dog stick at this point. Be able to cut this point here, no worries. So again, keep it moving, don't let it sit in one spot. Not as critical with these wheels. With the force the wheels yet, to leave it sitting in the same spot, you get a massive black spot around it. Plus you lose a lot of material. Oh, slowly roll out edges. A little bit of a lock under there, no worries. Try and use all the wheels, you don't wear out a big patch. I've got tinted wheels as well. Tinted wheels as well. Good English there. The tongue twister. But anyway, um, this is uh, impregnated diamond on like a belt top. So they do wear out. Uh, found them nice and easy to change. I use tinted wheels, uh, which are basically diamond stuck in the actual metal itself. And they'll last pretty much a lifetime, but only use those for the force of these. And that's on a different machine. So. So let's keep working away at that. Get a nice little polish on there. Squeeze around the back. Not that anyone's ever going to see it, but you know that it'll put a nice little edge on it so it sits nicely in the setting. Alright, so again, quickly just give it a rough try on your arm or something. T shirt. So you can also use local from waxing. Wouldn't recommend it. Let's try that again. Alright, still got a bit of moisture on it. Anyway, get the light shining on it and see if you've got any little dents in it. Alright, I'm gonna dry this one off. Juggling the different things. Oh my god, that's pretty dry now. Okay, so you get the light rolling across it and you should get a nice one. Basically a pre polish this wheel, absolutely does very little removal of material. So it's again just going around the 
stone. Really just polishing it now. Pre-polish. Basically the step for cerium oxide. Still keep it moving. Polish in the edges first. And we roll it way back onto the centre of the stone, onto the base. Keep it moving. We're also slightly pushing harder around the edges than the middle. So it gives it that nice little roll. Still gives it a bit of a rolling flat. And draw it off. Turn that off. Turn that off as well. So we can get a bit better look at it. Oh, where are we? So it's getting a nice little polish on it now. Now we'll head off to the cerium oxide and give it a final polish. All right, we're onto the cerium oxide stage now. So this is a felt wheel, which we make a slurry of um, just water and cerium oxide. We'll crank it up. Whilst it's, whilst it's going, we run a bit of water through. Got to keep this nice and clean, free from impurities, otherwise it can scratch the stone. So we just make up a bit of a slurry and then brush it onto the wheels. Just a felt wheel. These grooves that are in there are just made over time. Where you um, polish an uh, opal and it makes its own little grooves, and we find them quite handy actually you can get into different positions and things. So put a nice bit of um, slurry onto the wheel, make sure it's nice and wet. You don't want to burn your opal. So that's plenty. So I'm getting, sorry, I'm just getting tangled up in the boards here. <laughs> anyway, anyway, you just drive that. So get your favorite opal and just move it around gently. This is, so the wheel's nice and wet now. Keep moving it. In the sides. And you can actually feel the temperature in the stone. If it starts getting too hot, just put more water on. I like to use this bit down here to get right into the corners. That's just wear after a while. You know, you keep it nice and wet. You can see the slurry moving around over the stone. You don't want it to dry out the stone can get super hot. So again, keep wetting it. Doing this one handed which is okay but tricky with a camera in the face. definitely easier on a dob stick. You can spin it around really quick and all sorts of things, but well, today I'll just do one without it. Gotta make sure you hang on to them and they don't take off on you. Because um, the last thing you want is it to go flying, hitting the frame. Sometimes you can put a bit of a barricade around there with a sponge if you want it to. Uh, especially starting out, they're a bit slippery, but once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. Alright, last little bit on there. And that's pretty much it. So, turn that off. Just put a bit of water on there and give it a bit more of a rinse. And obviously that's still wet, but... We'll get a decent picture of that in a minute. 
give some decent lighting but anyway that's pretty much the finished piece so it'll make a nice little wing in the bezel setting anyway i'll get some pictures of that in a sec Yeah, so this is off the um, cerium oxide wheels, pretty much finished. Just sort of give you a quick look at the colours. Um, just noticed on this bit of white paper on the background, the colours uh, are look more realistic uh, than what they do when I'm trying to cut the thing. So yeah, this is kind of what it's. This is kind of its true colours. Uh, it's got a not, lots of nice red, um, nice bit of flashy red orange up the top, and yeah, it comes up right. I'll just give it a quick clean of the cloth, and we'll give it a weigh up. But yeah, it's not a bad little gem. Okay, so that's the finished product. I'll just give it a quick weigh up. Uh, I was hoping for five carats, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think we're gonna be a fair way short, actually. But we shall see. Oh, no. what have we got here? 4.8. That's not too bad. It's actually a lot more than I thought. All right, that's a decent size. What are we, um, what are we weighing here? Uh, measurement of me. I really gotta get a battery for this. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have got where's this display gone? A bit hard to read. 15.3 by 11 by 4.5. So plenty to set with. No worries there. I'll just give a quick polish up. Just get a nice clean cloth when you do this. Uh, you don't want any rubbish on a cloth because you can put fine scratches into a stone. This just gets a bit of the cerium oxide off. Go have a quick wash beforehand. Um, gets most of it off and this will give it a little bit of a polish anyway. So you should be able to see now if you get the light rolling over the stone you should be able to you shouldn't be able to see any scratches at all. You should have a nice even polish all over which this one has. So We'll zoom in a little bit there. It's got some nice colour. The, you know, I keep saying this. Um, camera struggles to pick up colour, but anyway, that'll give you a bit of an idea. Um, so that will be that's cut for a bezel setting. So you won't see any of this stuff on the back. Still a nice solid Australian opal from a good field. Um, so that won't craze or crack down the track. That's um, it's good opal. That I don't know if we can get a good picture of it. It's all about the light, isn't it? It's quite bright. Um, anyway, so oh, as a bezel, anyway, this will be give you a bit of an idea. What was that? Oh, something else. Okay, so where are we? I'll try and zoom in and explain what I'm talking about when I say about a bezel setting. So this will be a pretty, pretty bad drawing, but anyway, so a bezel setting, you have a base. This is looking side on like a cut section of a setting, you may as well say. So you have a base of silver or gold, and then on the edges, you have the bezel part of a setting, which could be either silver or gold again as well. And your stone, and I'll do both sides. So you have your gold, gold base, which is generally a lot heavier duty, or silver base to keep your cost down, whichever people want. And then you solder on. So this is look like, imagine looking sideways on a setting. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well. Anyway, so you've got the edges of the setting which goes around the stone. So there's a little bit of silver or gold put on there. And when you solder, you actually end up with this little tiny bit of um, like a curve, which happens when you solder this to that. So this is why we put a 45 degrees or a little bit of the knock the edge off the sides of the opal. So they sit nicely into that setting like that. Anyway, then this piece, we put a curve on the opal as well on the top. A little 45, trying to juggle things. A little bit of a, you need a little bit of a chamfer on the side of that, which is polished. And then when it sets into the setting, kind of like that, this bends over the stone. So if I blow this up even bigger, we've got, say, a stone with a little tiny roll at the bottom. Got the side of the stone, a roll at the top, and then we can have your cabochon on the top, whichever, however big you want that. Same on this side, a little bit of a roll. And the setting comes up the side of the stone. Originally it starts off like that. And then we actually bezel it over and it actually curves the precious metal over the stone. So it curves, gets rid of this bit, curves it around the stone. That's why we need to put a lip on the top. So it locks the stone into place and then that can't fall out. Clear as mud. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that.
um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh, if good, please subscribe. It makes a huge difference, apparently. Thanks for watching. See ya.